My name is David Eagle, Principal Consultant from OneSpatial, and this is a presentation to give you some helpful facts about licensing the FME product. I'll go through a number of things, including the different products that are available and the additions, um, the installation of FME, and the different types of license, uh, whether it's a fixed or a floating license, and some of the resources you can use to help you out uh, when you're working and setting up your initial uh, installations of the products. So, the main products that are available, um, FME Desktop and FME Server. FME Desktop is available to be licensed with a floating license model. That's sometimes referred to as Node Locked, you might hear it uh, called that. There's also something called a floating license, and that's also available for FME Desktop. Um, occasionally that's referred to as a concurrent license because it means that you can have more than one individual using FME at any one time. So those licenses are concurrent. The FME server product um, is a slightly different proposition to desktop. Um, it means essentially that you can get the use of FME uh, through a web page um, and you can provide access to FME to individuals who don't necessarily have to know how to use FME but can operate a web page in order to perhaps download some spatial data from a, a web service that you've set up. Now, FME Server is only available to be licensed using a floating license model. Uh, so that's something to remember uh, when you come to plan your infrastructure. There's also uh, a third proposition, and that's FME Cloud. Um, it's uh, at uh, the current time, which is March 2013. Um, not quite in beta yet, but uh, it's certainly something to watch out for uh, because that will provide an all new way of licensing the FME product. When you talk about FME uh, desktop, there is something called an addition. This often has a little bit of confusion surrounding it. Essentially what it means is that um, as you go down the stack of additions that are available from base through professional, through the Esri and Intergraph tier, through the Oracle, SQL Server and IBM tier, through to Small World, as you go through that stack, two things happen. One is that you get the ability to write more data formats, so specifically writing data formats. So an example there is that with FME Professional, you can read data out of um, a MapInfo tab file, but you can't write it into a uh, Oracle spatial database. If you wanted to write that data into a, uh, an Oracle spatial database or into SQL Server spatial, you would need to purchase the um, database tier. Uh, so as you go through the stack, the second thing that happens is that you pay a little bit more uh, for each of the additions um, through from top to bottom. Now this second, uh, third and fourth tiers um, are referred to as uh, respectively the FME Enterprise Edition and the Database Edition. Essentially it's a, a little bit of a marketing term uh, when you purchase your uh, FME edition, you might buy the FME Esri edition or the FME Intergraph edition. Essentially, they are the same thing. They're the Enterprise edition. And it means that when you buy the uh, Esri edition, for example, um, you can write some of the more um, involved Esri formats, uh, such as working with the SDE uh, database extension from Esri. Now, Additions are not relevant to FME Server. Basically, the two products, FME Desktop and FME Server, operate as a server and uh, as a server and client pair. So, if you buy FME Desktop, um, when you decide that your organisation needs FME Server, you still need to retain at least one license to FME Desktop because FME Desktop is the authoring environment where you write the processing scripts that you can then publish to FME Server. Um, now, if you can write a script that gives you the ability to write into, or into an Oracle database uh, in desktop, when you publish that process to server, server can do exactly the same things as desktop can do. So, it's not too complicated, but it does um, need to be understood uh, a little around that, uh, that topic. But for any further clarification, please go to safe.com forward slash formats. And on that web page, you'll see that uh, 
quite easily you can sort by the different um, uh, version of uh, operating system that you have or platform and you can take a look at the different uh, platforms uh, and the formats that are supported um, between uh, the different environments so you can see here that FME server is included here to indicate what formats are available. So installing FME it's the same installer it doesn't matter what edition that you've bought um, you install or download the same uh, the same installer from safe.com forward slash downloads um, the license itself the license file that you get issued is the file that unlocks uh, the edition that you've bought um, the only thing to be aware of is that if you want to talk if you want to use the 64-bit FME then that is a separate installer um, it's not always the best approach um, it's a, a bit of a, a, a a more detailed conversation or a, an, another presentation to go into uh, the pros and cons of 32-bit versus 64-bit but certainly there's a very useful page on FMEpedia if you search for 32-bit uh, versus 64-bit on that page on FMEpedia uh, then you'll find a very useful article that gives you the pros and cons of the uh, the two-bit versions so FME Desktop's fixed licenses um, is a very useful license model um, if you want uh, or an individual needs dedicated access uh, to FME. Um, the license file uh, will be provided to you. It'll basically be called something.fmelic. Um, that file extension uh, tells you that it's a fixed license. Uh, to generate that license, we already know what your serial number is but we will need your registration key. So the first thing you need to do is install FME Desktop and then fire up the, uh, the license wizard. In the bottom left hand corner you'll see there's a registration key and we need that number. It will be specific and only valid to your machine um, and um, if anything happens to your machine, if you have some new RAM or a new hard drive, it's likely that that number will change. So we're happy to reissue your license in that case, or if in fact you want to move that license across to another machine. Moving to floating licenses, they're quite useful if you have several people who want to have uh, regular access to FME, or perhaps you want uh, corporate installations, so you have lots of uh, installations of FME, um, and you want to be able to serve one or many licenses across your network to all the individual users who need access to that. When we provide you with a license file, it'll be called um, safe.lic or something.lic. That LIC file extension indicates that it's a floating license file that you've been given. And uh, it gives you the ability to serve uh, your licenses potentially to many machines. Um, but you do need to install a little license server utility with a floating license. So that's available from safe.com forward slash downloads. You can go and get that license server utility. Install it in, uh, in under a minute and that can host your license file and serve out your license seats. Um, to create the license file we need uh, to understand the server name and the MAC address of the license server machine. Um, one of the other beauties of the uh, floating license platform is that it does allow users to borrow a license from the server, essentially turning them into local fixed licenses for up to 30 days. So if you have a user that needs to work on the, uh, on the local network and uh, wants to borrow a license, um, they can borrow that and then they can disconnect their machine from the local network if it's a laptop go out onto a customer site or go uh, and use it at a different environment taking the license with them and when their duration their period of time that they borrow it from um, expires then the license will automatically retur return return uh, you'll see that in fme workbench you can license uh, or borrow a license using uh, directly from the uh, the interface there Specify the number of days you want to borrow it for, click OK, and it will essentially borrow the license from the server, meaning that there are there is one fewer license available to everybody else, but you do have a fixed license for that period of time. The other thing to be able to bear in mind with the floating license platform is that it can, after a certain amount of licenses, become more economic to work and to purchase um, additional floating licenses. 
Um, so that's something to bear in mind when you're you, when you're uh, working or requiring perhaps three or more licenses in your organisation. Once invested in the floating license platform, though, it's very quick to b deploy FME. Essentially, all we need to do is upgrade your license file, and all of a sudden you'll have another uh, one or more licenses available uh, to your users. The other thing to bear in mind is, as I mentioned, FME servers engines. Um, are only licensed uh, with the floating license platform. Um, desktop and server licenses can be served from the same license file if needed. Um, and the other thing to bear in mind is that if you're a larger organization and you want to avoid a, a single point of failure uh, and essentially have uh, a, a failover environment on the license server, you can do that with the floating license. It does mean that you have to dedicate three servers, and only three, um, to serve your licenses. And essentially, uh, for no extra cost, you can have your uh, license server utility installed on each of those um, uh, server machines. And they can broadcast, uh, the first will broadcast the license. Um, should there be a failure on this machine over here, essentially it knows that there's a second one available, and it hands the baton to the second machine that can continue to serve your license files out to your users, meaning that they experience no downtime. If there is um, a problem with the second machine, then the third machine can kick in and also supply the licenses out uh, to your users. Um, it's unlikely that that would happen, but um, perhaps there might be uh, a failure that uh, is uh, specific to those machines. Um, if the third one um, does have uh, a problem with it, that's as many goes as you get, essentially. Unfortunately, uh, that, that will mean that your users don't get a, a license. But it's likely that um, probably when the second license server kicked in, um, you would have known about it and been able to resolve the issue and, uh, and make sure that there's no further outage. Um, that's it from me, really, for this session. The, the only thing I wanted to say is that there are a few very useful resources to go and take a look at. Um, the uh, FMEpedia documentation uh, page is uh, definitely worth going to. Uh, you'll notice that uh, on here, under the knowledge documentation, there's a number of documents to download and get stuck into. Um, the FME uh, Getting Started Guide is uh, very useful uh, and allows you to uh, get started with your uh, new purchases very quickly. Um, and the FME licensing um, and installation manual is very useful. It's available as a PDF or online uh, to help you find out and work with um, the initial setup and the different types of troubleshooting that you might have to do when you're initially setting up your licenses. Um, there are also some dedicated pages to, to take a look at when it comes to troubleshooting. So just go to FMEpedia and search for um, either fixed license or floating license troubleshooting on FMEpedia, and you'll see that uh, there are a number of options uh, to go through and try and find out what the problem might be when you're setting up your, uh, your license. Um, that said, usually it's pretty much pr plain sailing, but uh, there are some different environments that um, can mean you need to uh, reference some further documentation, and they're the best places to go. For now, thank you very much. Um, as I said, my name's David Eagle and uh, I work for One Spatial and hopefully this uh, session has been useful to you.